This is a Mototech 48 volt Pro. This now has a Far Driver 72300 controller. And it's great, but it's not perfect. So let's make it perfect by tuning it with one of these. Now only if I knew how to tune. If you're familiar with the Far Driver app at all, then you know there are hundreds of parameters, all sorts of numbers, and every single one of them more or less can be changed. That's a lot. Not to mention the fact that some of these parameters are pretty important to the components, and if you change them incorrectly, that can cause permanent damage. But before we get into all of that, let's first remind ourselves where we last left this bike. This thing has been running pretty flawlessly with just auto learn. The acceleration is great. It's nice and smooth. Top speed has definitely been improved here. You can just hear that from the motor whir. I'll also point out that unfortunately my pink grips are gone. The thumb throttle is gone. That thing after one ride it was just too much. The throw was too high so my thumb was way too high and it was so uncomfortable that I had to immediately go back to the twist throttle. The only issue is that at more or less a certain speed, certain RPM, it judders really badly. So I have to give it more throttle for it to smooth out or just let off and then it's fine. But if I just kind of partially stay on the throttle like right about there very juddery but i want to start all of this with covering some basic troubleshooting steps first of which being the auto learn process that we did last time last time we had it up on the stand like you see here and the wheel was free spinning now that might have caused an issue with the auto learn because there's excess drag from the wheel from the chain that the motor is dealing with. So in the auto learn process, it might have been the case that it was giving itself parameters that it shouldn't have. So before I go messing with any of the parameters, let's first just start off fresh with an auto learn, this time with the chain disconnected. All right, now let's see if that did absolutely anything. I did a quick check, just screenshot from the old parameters to the new parameters after the auto learn. And the only thing that changed was the phase offset and it was only by one. So I don't think that was the issue, but let's just do a quick lap here and see. Oh, there it is. You hear it? Yeah, that sounds pretty rough still. So with that one parameter being changed, the phase offset, I think what that does, more or less, I'm not 100% on this, but I think what that offset does is kind of allows for a little bit of variance in the motor, which is why that changed and why with other parameters that are posted online, everyone has a different number, so it kind of varies. I'm thinking that with the auto learn, even though we did that over again, it's still not getting it quite right. So in testing this, I stepped it down 10. So now it's not 275, it's 265. And yep, right there, still crunchy. So let's just do it all over again, try 255. Okay, that was not the right thing. So I stepped it down, I started doing increments of 20 just to save for time, and now we're at 215. I just turned it on and it sounds horrible so definitely not the case we're going to put that back up to 275. okay let's see if that got us back to where we needed to be oh yeah much better still crunchy but it's acting like it should be so phase offset was not the right call but that's the other part of this is trial and error and one of those aspects of trial and error is to just do one thing at a time so that way you know exactly what you're changing and what the impact of that change is. We stepped down the phase offset and clearly that was not the right option. It was making things worse. So now we're back to a reset. Now we can try something else. All right, here's our ratios and speed. So it starts at 100% from 500 RPM, 500 RPM increments and immediately kind of tapers off 90, 80, 70, 60, 55. I'm gonna do what many have changed, which is just make everything 100 at least everything 100 up to the 5500 rpm and then we'll taper it off okay now we got 100 percent through 5500 save let's try it again it feels a little snappier off the line that's for sure but let's see if the problem persists i don't think this would change anything but you never know oh and there it is crunch. Okay, so with that ratios and speed change, nothing really had any effect on that crunchiness. Although I didn't expect it to, but this was something that I wanted to change anyway. So let's move on to something else. This one, again, I don't know if this is going to actually have any impact, but it is something that I want to change and that people have noted to change online, which is throttle accelerator step and throttle decelerator step. These are two numbers right here in parameters. This is set currently at 128. The higher the number, the quicker the response. And so with this, I want as little as a delay as possible. I want instantaneous. And so you can max this out, which I believe is 224. 
So we're going to put 224 on throttle axe step and throttle deck step or deceleration step. 224. Save. Definitely feels more responsive, that's for sure. But let's see if it fixed anything with that crunchy throttle. And right there, there's our not so sweet spot. Still. <laughs> Don't do that. All right, so a few things I'm trying to troubleshoot to eliminate any possible issues with something external. So one of the other things that I was thinking of was maybe it's just the drivetrain. Maybe it just happens that at that RPM, it starts to vibrate and get juddery or something like that and has nothing to do with the electronics and it has nothing to do with the motor. So we're gonna test that and eliminate that factor. So I've disconnected the drivetrain again. So this is no longer connected. The chain is not connected to the motor, anything like that. So let's turn this on and see whether or not the motor has any judders when you're going through partial throttle. I don't know, that sounded pretty smooth to me. This is full throttle. And here it is more or less at partial throttle, kind of where I think the judder actually happens. Who knows, maybe it is the fact that this was just loose or something or not tightened properly, even though I checked it beforehand and we already did the auto learn again with this disconnected and so I reconnected it and it's still giving me the same problem, but who knows, maybe I did the wrong thing twice. Third time's the charm. So we got the chain reattached and everything is tensioned appropriately. There's no slack or at least very little. And so now with the wheel on and actually attached to the motor, I re-ran it just going through the whole speed and all the different throttle positions and you can kind of hear it now. So this is full throttle. Now if we let off a little bit. Oh, right there, right there. So it's like basically in one very, very finite part of the throttle where it's just all of a sudden it just gets really crunchy. Well, it's been a few days now. I've had some more time to do some research and further testing on the bike and did not find much at all. I basically started this journey combing over the parameters even more, going as far as to finding a manual for the Far Driver app, which has some rough explanations of all these parameters so I can dig a little deeper. First, I found this thing called limit speed, which was set at 2000 RPM. And so I figured maybe it's happening at 2000 RPM, so I'll maximize that, but Nope. Then I thought maybe it was this thing called AN, which I still don't really know what it is, but it has something to do with the type of motor that it's connected to. There's actually some conflictions online saying whether or not this should be set at zero or set at 16, but ultimately I found that it should be set at zero, which it was, so that wasn't it. I even thought back all the way to the first thing that I started changing in this video, which was the phase offset, except this time, now having read the manual, I was changing it just by one or two numbers, not 10 or 20 numbers, and still nope. Finally, I had to throw in the towel and admit to myself, I had no idea what I was doing. So I reached out to an expert, someone who's very well known in the Far Driver tuning apps and was kind enough to help me out with a custom tune. He went in and changed a bunch of parameters that I didn't even think to change, let alone know what they were. And it didn't work, but it didn't do nothing. So of all the parameters that we changed, I think the secret sauce more or less is the max phase current. So previously I had it at 100 amps because I figured I was being safe with it, but phase amps, we're talking about torque here. And so we upped it to 220 and now with more torque at the very least, even though the judder is still there, I'm getting past that RPM a little faster. So it's not as known as felt as it was previously. So not perfect, but hey, it's better. So it's not perfect. And now it's got me questioning. Is it something that I'm missing? Is it something outside of the tuning? I know I checked a few things like the drivetrain. I also took the covers off here to make sure all the connections were still good, but is it something else? Who knows? Maybe it's something blatantly obvious though. Maybe there's something that you're watching this on your screen and just saying like, why the hell did he not do this? If so, please, for the love of God, comment down below and let me know what this obvious mistake is. I am just fingers crossed that someone gives me something down down there that is so obvious and so easy that it just might work. And hey, while you're down there, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already, because I am not done with this bike, not by a long shot, and I'd love for you to follow along. In fact, even though we just finished tuning this for the most part, we're gonna be putting it 100% back to stock 
for a couple of very exciting reasons. This is some stuff that you'll definitely want to stay in the loop for. And if you're involved in the Mototech community at all or know anything about these bikes, then you probably have been chomping at the bit for this kind of content and I plan to deliver.